Well hello again it's Cliff here from Down Under and in this video I'm going to talk about this old 1100 I bought back in 2007 and it's been a great little machine and run well and reliably for many years but just recently I had a little issue uh, with the spindle drive eventually failed and I got a flashing error message OU so it turned out to be the spindle brake resistor and I'll just go through uh, diagnosing that and and repairing it and um, one or two little uh, tips and tricks along the way that's hopefully going to be useful to some of you guys all right cheers well here we are a bit of history serial number 286 and uh, 2007 so this is one of the very original series 1 1100s um, a couple of years ago, I upgraded it to a Series 3, and if you're interested in that upgrade, I've done a video on it. If you go back through this YouTube channel, back a few years, two or three years, I forget now, but you'll find it there, um, a video on upgrading. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to go into the issue I've just had with the spindle drive. It's, I've just fixed it, and this is how it normally goes. So it's running at 5,140 and it's, the spindle brake is working there but what was happening is it was going you know and taking quite a few seconds to stop um, and then after a while the uh, spindle drive uh, error message started to come up error E-R-O-U was flashing and uh, I couldn't run the machine anymore so I had to address this problem I couldn't just ignore it um, so I, I had a bit of a look at it I'm not an, an electrical expert but I began to think that probably the uh, spindle brake resistor had gone and looking at uh, Tormac's operating manual um, it said it was a 75 ohm resistor so I put uh, my multimeter across it and I got a zero reading so Perhaps it had burned out. There's no wires on there. I, I cut them off um, for, for a reason which I'll explain in a minute. So I thought, oh well, it's probably that. So I took this, just to be sure, I took the spindle brake resistor off my more recent 1100. You see, that's the great thing about having two machines. You can justify that to your wife. I need it for the spare parts. I started stocking spare parts here in New Zealand and I had a couple of thousand dollars worth and I never had the part I needed so I thought oh I'll just buy another machine and then I've got immediate backup I can just shift the job into the other machine and if you just buy the base machine uh, at least at the time I bought this one it's not too expensive and then build your own standard enclosure and so on so anyway I took the uh, res I digress don't I I took the uh, resistor off the other machine installed it on this one and sure enough it ran fine so I had proven to myself that the problem was the resistor this this part here with two wires coming out of it which I have since cut off but okay it worked fine with the other resistor on it and so a sort of a rudimentary understanding of how it works when the motor is spinning and you switch it off the momentum of the whole spindle and the motor means that it takes a long time to slow down uh, but the motor actually, once it's turned off, starts to generate electricity. And that electricity uh, slowly dissipates. Um, but if you connect that electricity that's being generated, and this is what the spindle drive control does, if you connect that electricity that's being generated to a little heater, I mean, basically this resistor is a little heater. It's probably got some... Um, nichrome resistance wire wound inside it and a 75 ohm resistance and um, then it the energy goes into heating up this uh, resistor and then the spindle goes down really fast because it's got a load on it it's doing a job but after several years of use it burned out the little wire well that's my rudimentary understanding of it so I ordered I was going to order a new resistor from Tormark because and it was quite expensive you know Tormac prices have gone up quite a bit lately 
So I had a look online and you know even if you're in the States this could be worth considering guys because you could probably get this from you know a US parts shop. This was from RS Components here in Australasia and I bought this in Australia and it was only uh, from Australia and it was only from memory about 50 or 60 dollars including shipping and it's a, a slightly different unit than this one um, and I couldn't get exactly the right uh, rating it's uh, 75 ohms that's fine but instead of 200 watts it was 300 watts and I thought well that's probably gonna work I mean it's the same resistance it's just rated to a higher level um, and it's a lot cheaper and I'll probably get it a lot quicker so I took a punt and I ordered it anyway I've just connected it up now and it works fine so I thought I'd do this quick video if you people in the future have a problem with your spindle brake not working an error message is coming up on your spindle con drive controller and you get the error message E-R-O-U flashing then it's probably your resistors burned out and you can buy a Tormac replacement part or you can buy, buy something like this a 75 ohm resistor this one's a 300 watt I imagine this will last longer because it's rated higher I've just got to do a little bit of modification in there to make space for it because it's slightly wider uh, but it should fit fine and um, I'm back up and running again so that's brilliant here we go power on power off so that brake is generating electricity and heating that little resistor there. I won't touch it because I'm just not 100% sure about what is live and what isn't at the moment. I'll power it right off and bolt it in place. Well, The reason why I cut those wires off was that the uh, resistor I got from RS Components didn't have any wires on it and these wires look to be thermally insulated so I burgled those off of there and crimped on a couple of heavy duty terminals and um, that's just a quick and simple way to get that correct wiring so I just drilled and tapped a couple of small threaded holes in this uh, mounting plate here I just use M4 metric I had to shift shift over this uh, terminal block one set of holes to make a bit more space and put a rag in there to catch the uh, drilling chips that have come off so I don't get it down into anything electrical I'll just go through the process of doing that because there's a couple of tricks here that make it go a lot easier probably most of you will know this but um, when you when you're um, manually drilling with a pistol drill it goes way faster if you start well let's start right from the beginning so you mark it with a felt pen use an automatic center punch put your ear muffs on so that because it makes a loud bang and your head's close to it it's not good for your eardrums put your put your ear muffs on use an automatic center punch then use a very small drill you know like a two millimeter drill um, too small and you might break the drill but a very small drill goes through very quickly and easily and then the, the, the center holes removed and you can enlarge it to the size you want very quickly and easily so a 2 mil drill then a 3.3 drill and then just go in with a pistol drill uh, you can set your clutch down low and just power the tap through with a bit of cutting oil so that's all done in a few seconds uh, but if you try and go in with a bigger drill from the start, it can take a long time. And if you're at an awkward angle, that can be quite difficult. There we are. That's it mounted in position there. I just needed to shift over the top uh, terminal block one uh, pitch of the little mounting screw holes. Uh, that was simple enough. And drill and tap two M4 uh, screws. They could be bigger than that, but M4 is probably plenty. To mount that in place so let's fire it up all seems well so that's replacing this resistor 
75 ohm 200 watt resistor with a more readily available 75 ohm 300 watt resistor. Uh, I'm not an expert on things electrical, but I'm sure somebody will watch this video who has a deeper knowledge of these type of electrics. I'd really appreciate it, sir, if you would post in the comments underneath uh, that this is okay or if it's not okay. So that if somebody in the future is considering doing this, drop down to the comments and look for uh, advice as to whether this is okay or not okay. That way we're all learning from these YouTube videos. Thank you for watching.